Indiana who gave us an 80s to remember by lighting up a battle between the Celtics and the Lakers will forever be heralded as one of the players who saved... Yo, 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 yo. what's the deal, what's the deal, what's your boy, what's in though, we back talking sports, NBA legends explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was. Man, y'all know my re resurgence of respect for Larry Bird now that we do on this channel. This is part one. Let's check it out. To basketball. Bird and Magic's coast to coast war and jaw dropping styles gave the NBA the boost it needed before the emergence of Michael Jordan. But for Bird, with three titles, two finals MVPs, and three consecutive MVP seasons, some forget just how good he really was. Today we look at NBA players explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was in his prime. Before we get into all that, if you want to win a PS5 with NBA 2K22 and Madden NFL 22, and others get left behind because of the lack of titles like Charles Barkley. What happens when all these players talk of another great as if he was like no other? Larry Bird was lauded by most of these legends, because he was one of them too. He was consistent, tough, offensively masterful, and one of the first big guys to shoot many three-point shots. LeBron James spoke candidly in an interview about how he was one of the few guys ever to win a three-point contest with a warm-up shirt on, LeBron referring to the time Larry won his third consecutive three-point contest. James continued, For young guys that don't know him, you know, they, they think of Larry Bird as a jump shooter, uh, but he was so much more than that. He was a passer. He averaged double-digit rebounds. Um, he definitely took charges. And, um, you know, he's a straight-up complete basketball player, and me as a small forward. Later in his career, LeBron adapted his game to the new way of basketball, which was a charge led by the Golden State Warriors in shooting more from behind the arc. LeBron was considered a big guy, but began shooting more threes, and no doubt was heavily influenced by the fact that Larry Legend had already achieved this feat in the 80s. In another interview, when asked about his top three of all time, LeBron put Larry Bird firmly in there with MJ and Dr. J. Oh my God, three. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Larry Bird, Dr. J. Michael. Shaq had a very different opinion on Larry initially. He said he disliked Bird because he was jealous. He thought, how could this regular looking guy do everything? Never really had a chance to play against Larry Bird, but I, I actually used to hate Larry Bird. I, 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 I hated him. Shaq soon realized as he grew older and wiser that despite getting the luck of the Irish with the Celtics, Larry made his own luck when it came to shooting the ball. Shaq, at 7'1", of course, had a completely different style of game at the time. He was built to the max and used brute force to impose his will on the defense and rack up the points, blocks, and rebounds. Shaq was also fast and... I would hate a dude, too, if I was all this, you know what I'm saying, all this brute strength and all of this, you know what I'm saying, uh, physicality and a, a regular guy who can't run faster than me, not stronger than me or anything, just a regular white guy is still better than me. <sighs> You feel me? So, hey, I understand why you're jealous. You know what I'm saying? Larry Bird was a was a bad motherfucker. <laughs> for real. It's been the most given credit for, particularly in the early part of his career. Now the rebound. Now the magic for the final shot chance. O'Neal runs the floor. Takes it all the way. Bird was notoriously slow, which was all the more testament to his skill set. But his basketball IQ was just on a different planet. Different planet. The best passer, I'll keep saying it, the best passer from the floor i ever seen in my life. Like, the IQ when he's, like, you know what I'm saying, best loose ball passer ever, bro. His IQ and court awareness is ridiculous while, like, you know what I'm saying, fighting for the ball and everything. He once sank a shot from behind the backboard, which O'Neal chalked down to a fluke following a bet with his friend. And this is the bird! Jack never really got the chance to play against Larry Bird, which is unfortunate, because I don't think it would have taken him so long to recognize greatness. On the other hand, six-time NBA champion Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battled Bird on numerous occasions while playing with the Showtime Lakers. Bird got the better of him in the 1984 Finals, and took another two in a decade that was largely dominated by the purple and gold. Kareem spoke about how Larry might have been the best he had played against, and said, uh, How good was Michael Jordan? Jordan? People, I don't think people, 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 people look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, slow guy. The chubby white guy, he <laughs> wore us out, man. <laughs> you know? Because he just, this was, this muscle here, the one between his ears, Yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers, and he had assists, rebounding, steals, 
he was always at the right place at the right time on the court. You know, one of the great players that, you know, I had the opportunity to play against. 11-time All-Star Charles Barkley, a regular season MVP during a star-filled 90s, was once asked, are you better than Bird? And he took a long pause before answering, which is very telling. Am I better than Bird? Oh, man, that's a great question. No. Most great players respond immediately with how they think they're the best because you have to have that kind of mentality in order to get to the top. Instead, Barkley answered, I'm a better rebounder. I'm probably a better defender. He's a better shooter, obviously. You know, a uh, better playmaker. Uh, better, better playmaker. The rebounding is up in the air. How many? Uh, somebody comment how many rebounds he averaged for a year. I mean, for a career. Uh, how many all team defenses did he make? Two. Um, better winner. Better leader. Better ball handler. A lot of people talk about who's better. But you have to think, you have to have that mentality. No, no, you know, yeah. you know, you know. Uh, like, if I think, you know, it's, it's a team game. I think deep down he knew that Bird was a better player. And for someone as good as Chuck to be stumped like that in an interview shows you how heavy the weight of Larry Bird's legacy was. Former teammate Kevin McHale also references how unreal Bird was to play. play with. McHale was Bird's right-hand man while playing with Boston, claiming the Sixth Man of the Year award twice, along with seven All-Star appearances. His story of a specific Detroit game is fascinating. There was a bit of time left on the clock, and we had beaten Detroit, and I just scored 56, and I'm walking off the court, and Larry said, where are you going? I said, I'm done. I said, I'm ex Yeah, Kevin McHale was underrated, too. I'm gonna finish this out. You know what I'm saying? One, one video. Well, it's gonna do two parts, but we're just gonna finish this out. But yeah, Kevin McHale is underrated too. And I believe like, you know what I'm saying? If Kevin McHale was on his own team, he would probably be even, uh, he would have been even greater than he already was with Bird. I'm exhausted, I'm tired. Larry goes, don't do it, man. Cause when I get that hot, I'm not coming out of the game. A week later, he got that hot. He looked at me at about 50 points and he looked at me and said, I told you. The pair would go on to win three titles together and McHale would continue to tell stories that live on in Celtics folklore forevermore. A highlight being a throwback from Bird's brutal trash talk at a game in Phoenix. We have a play, out of bounds play, I'm taking it out, and um, Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three, and I'm like, we're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm like, just, let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole, try to get fouled. Let's just get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. And Larry says, no, nah, I'm just going to bust a three on him. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, my God. So he tells the, tells the Phoenix bench, um, he tells the coaches, yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. And he gets the ball, jumps out, busts the play, comes out, gets the ball at the slot, shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so. <laughs> Larry's mental game was such that he could just open up any team and tear them apart. He would use psychological warfare on a regular basis. Players speak of his toughness not because of his size or physicality, but because of his mind. He would impose his will on the opposition and could force them off their game just as much as he could switch on his. A mastermind at trash talk tactics, Larry Bird will forever go down in history as one of the greatest trash talkers of all time. And in the 80s, that mattered. Yeah, when I heard Gary Payton, GP, say, yeah, Larry Bird was a, was one of the best trash talkers. I'm like, what? Like, this was a couple of years ago. And I'm like, wow. And so he was saying one day that Larry was like, yeah, wait, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to uh, catch it right there, and I'm going to shoot the three, and it's going to be over. And he went and did that shit. And then the three-point contest, like y'all said, he was in that warm up. Like I got my Larry Bird jersey on right now. Like he was like, "Which one of y'all going for second in a warm up?" And when he did it, like <laughs> crazy. With players such as Bill Lambier, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, and the eventual emergence of Michael Jordan, Bird did what was necessary in order to gain that mental edge that took him over the top. James Worthy. The 1988 Finals MVP simply stated that Larry was trash talking all the time, but the problem was he could back it up. Yeah, he he could back it up. 
So uh, <laughs> when you're arrogant, you can back it up. You're not arrogant. You're just good. And uh, and Larry was good. Even Warther's former teammate Magic Johnson spoke on the fact that he had a real dislike for Larry Bird as far back as their college playing days for the very reason that Larry would constantly get the better of him. Johnson claimed in a recent interview during a press build-up for the Broadway play about the pair that after he beat Larry in the NCAA championship game in 1979, the most watched college basketball game ever, by the time he got to the Lakers they were 0-8 and eight to the Celtics. You had to hate the Celtics to beat them because when I got here we were 0-4 I think 8 and then the first time against the Celtics and then in championship series and then we lost that in 84 that made us 0-9 I believe and later is quoted as saying when I played Larry Bird was the only one I feared not bad when hearing it from a five-time champion and one of the true great basketball players of all time at the 2019 NBA that's why I have Bird over Magic even Magic knew Larry Bird was better than him I know Magic got more accolades and more accomplished and everything, but as an individual player, and Larry won three MVPs in a row. Magic didn't do that. Larry Bird was a better rebounder than Magic, a better shooter than Magic. He was up there with playmaking, but I get at the Magic. Uh, better free throw shooter, better, def better defender. He made three-time all-defense. And he had made, he had more hustle plays. Playmaking is the only thing that Magic was better than him in. If you want to be real. Gay Awards. Johnson received the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award, but it was shared with, guess who? Larry Bird. Bird was simply the king of talking the talk, then actually going out and walking the walk. Listen, man. Retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs> Dominique Wilkins recounts one of the most famous games where Larry Bird promised Kevin McHale he was going to break McHale's record against Atlanta. Wilkins said, You got so hot in that game that you talk about that patented step back. He was doing that step back and he switched it to his left hand three separate times in that game. He hit a three. He was scoring anywhere on the floor Ooh, that he wanted. Is this when the I mean, bitch was, was giving each other five? The bitch was giving each other five. Did you get in a fight with them after the game? Forget, I, forget Larry. Did you beat anybody on the bench? That's what he was five. He's scoring on me. Every one of those guys got fined three thousand. Okay. <laughs> Larry's legend lives on because of the greats that want to tell them. The reason there's a list of top 10 players who consistently call Bird their toughest opponent or one of their all-time greats is because Larry himself is in that list. Larry is a top 10 baller of all time. His style doesn't. Listen, I would have slapped fire out of my teammates. You over there, motherfucker. Oh, my goodness. You over there slapping fives when he busting our ass like this. What the hell is wrong with y'all? doesn't matter when his skill sinks the opposition. Because above all, the opposition will remember. They'll remember the steals, the shots, the clutch plays, and the trash talk. They'll remember the bird from the early 80s, not from the early 90s. The Larry who stepped out on the court in his warm-up jacket and made Michael Jordan recoil in envy. MJ announced, oh, He took out his top yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see what he took his top. Well, when Bird did, it was all business. He may as well have taken a mop and bucket to the floor because he was about to clean up. He was an impetuous and never relenting opponent that took the life from anyone who stepped onto his battlefield. The consensus is a resounding stamp of legendary status for the man who will forever go down in the history books as one of the greatest ever players, and arguably the greatest ever Celtic to grace the court. What did you think of Larry Bird in his prime? Yeah, man, yeah, man. That was NBA Legends with their stories on Larry Bird. I think Larry Bird is underrated from the new generation. You know what I'm saying? They don't give him enough respect. People just think he's he was a shooter. And junk, and I hope that don't go on with Steph. I hope like thirty years from now, people don't just think Steph was a shooter and everything, because they were doing that with Larry Bird. And Larry Bird was way more than a shooter, bro. He was one of the most complete players, actually. He was underrated on defense, hustle, plays, and effort was. Uh, if you got, I'll put it like this: if you got a defensive player, all defense team. On effort and hustle, Larry Bird would have like 10 or 11 of those. Real talk. So, yeah, man, y'all tell me what y'all think about the video. What you think about Larry Bird? This has been Who is Hendo with another video. I'm out.